Hi, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. Before we continue our playthrough of Belfort, I had a request from one of our viewers, Ty Rosenbaum, who wanted to give names to our non-players. He wanted to call non-player 3, Harvey, and non-player 4, Walters. And I thought that was a great idea, and a lot of you did too, because I got several thumbs up. So let's do that, and let's get Luke back down here with us so we can continue this playthrough of Belfort. Okay, we're back and been joined by... Luke Smith. That's right. Now, Luke, it's my action phase. Yep. And this came to us from one of our viewers, The Flash Yellow. Got the most votes. And there was a couple of other suggestions as well that yeah. were starting to get some votes. It was interesting, even this early in the game, there was some different approaches to how I should take my turn. But let's get you guys to the table and find out what The Flash Yellow, and many of you, think yeah. I should do. So first of all, my dwarf worker who's been busy investing my money here at the Bankers Guild, he's going to return to me and bring with him three gold. gold. So I'm going to add that to my collection. Now we're going to build something. I have a property to build. I'm going to build the gardens. This is going to cost me three of my wood and two of my stone. So Luke, I'll hand that to you, sir. Okay. And now I'm going to be able to place one of my property markers. Now this is one thing the Flash Yellow didn't mention to me. Which district should I place this property in? And different people had different suggestions. Some said I should go in here, start competing with Luke. Where are you, Luke? In this wedge here. Others said I should start my own. I think I will start my own. I'm going to go in the gardens here. There'll be time for you and I to fight over the districts soon enough. <laughs> and the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to spend three of my coin, and I'm going to hire a gnome. So Luke, can you return that to the bank for me, please? I'm going to take one of these gnomes. I now have a place, because remember, when you hire a gnome, you have to have a gnome lock to put it on right away. And I have one now, the gardens. And this is a one-use-only effect. It will allow me to take one of my elf workers and flip it over into a master uh -oh. worker. And then as my final action, I'm going to spend one more coin, and I am going to pick up the tower. This is definitely one of the things people were debating. Should I grab the bank or should I grab the tower? Well, the tower won out. I'm adding that to my collection and I have to replace that taken card right away. And that's the end of my action phase. All right, well, we've taken our actions. Yep. And who's going to take their actions now? Harvey and Walter. That's right. So let's get you back to the table. Let's find out what these non-players are going to do. Mm -hmm. So to start, Harvey's going to go first. And he's going to get the in. All right, so we'll take the in card, and I'll just put this yeah. in the discard pile. And you have to place that property marker in my district. Yeah. <laughs> that feels very intentional. Okay, well, I'm going to replace the pro. Ooh, the gatehouse Oops. card. Now, this is interesting, because remember, normally, when you build this property as a normal player, uh -huh. you only place one of the one. property markers. That's right. And then later on, if you put a gnome on the gnome lock, you can place a second property marker yeah. on that property. If a non-player builds the gatehouse, you'll have to pick which of the sides of that gatehouse that you want to put the property marker on. And, of course, because non-players can't hire gnomes, that other side will never get filled in. I really wanted to be able to take the bank on my next turn, but I don't think I can risk leaving it here for you, Luke. So I'm going to build on the bank, and I'm going to put it in your district. Okay. And now, as the final part of the non-player's turn, we have to move the non-player's dwarves one space over yeah. clockwise. So now the Recruiter's Guild and Banker's Guild will be unavailable during the next round. And, of course, we have to replace the card that we yeah. took away. Blacksmith came out, so now we have two blacksmiths here. <laughs> Well, something else we need to correct, which probably yeah. you guys saw and were wondering, what's going on there? Did I miss an episode? No, we shouldn't have any points on the scoring track right now. No. These were moved earlier when I was taking some pictures of the board. Yeah. But now, let's move on to the scoring phase, which we can skip, right? Yeah. Because the round that we're on does not have an X on the calendar. No. So we now move right calendar. on. Now it is the calendar phase, so we'll move this forward into the second round and go to the placement phase, and you are still the first player. So we'll go back to the table and see where Luke wants to place first. So one of my dwarves is going to go to the Wizard's Guild to see if he can change the buildings around, but they want one gold. They sure do. You've got some yep. more sneaky plans, I can mm -hmm. tell. 
Well, I'm also going to visit a guild with my placement. I'm going to take a dwarf, and I'm going to put him in the Mason's Guild, and I'm going to have to send him with some coin to pay those Masons. Luke, it goes back to you. Who would you like to place? Pass. You're going to pass again. Yeah. So this means as soon as you pass, you place all the rest of your workers on the resource spaces of the collection board. How do you want to divide these up, Luke? I want to put three L's yes. here. That's in the woods. Yeah. Collect some wood. One over here in the gold. That's right. And the two dwarfs at the stone. Okay. Well, now it comes yep. back to me. I'm going to place one of my elves into the king's camp. I would like to be first player. Ooh. So that's what I'll do. And then I'm going to pass as well. So I'm going to place two dwarfs and my master elf into the mines. And then into the gold mines, I'm going to place a dwarf and an elf. That ends the placement phase, and now we can move right on to the collection phase. And look, this is a great place to be because now we're going to take back our workers that are on the collection board. Yep. Luke, you're the only one with somebody in the woods. What do you get? I have free wood, but because I have the most, I get an extra. Right, you get the bonus. Going over to the quarry, Luke, it looks like you yep. have the most there as well. So I get free. That's right. Two for your workers, one yep. for your bonus. Well, your time for bonuses is over. It's time to move on to the mines where I have a master elf. So my master elf is sort of the equivalent of two elves. So I can pair him up with the two dwarves to get two pieces of metal plus a bonus piece of metal for yeah. having the most workers there. Then when we come over to the gold mine, you can see that I have the most workers again. So I'm going to get two for my workers and then the bonus. And Luke, you also will get one. One gold for Luke. We'll take our workers back, and then we can move on to the king's camp because there's nobody at the recruiter's desk. I have somebody here. I'm going to take this elf back, and now I'm going to collect the first player turn order crest so I can go first from now on. And over here, we'll move on to collecting income and paying our taxes. Well, I'm happy to report, Luke, my gardens do give me some income. I get one gold. What about you and your inn? No. Aw, oh, too bad. And for the taxes part, neither of us have any points, nope. so we don't have to pay any taxes. So that ends the collection phase, and now we go on to... Action. Action phase. And I have the first turn order crest now, so that means I get to do my actions first. Let's get to the table and see what I'm going to do. Well, finally, my dwarf came back to camp, and he brought with him... Yep. Four stone. Four. So I'm going to take the four stone, add it to my area... Then I'm going to build a tower. This card here, it's going to cost me one wood, one wood, three stone, three stone, and one metal, which I'll hand to you metal. to put back in the supply. And so I get to place one of my property markers, and I'm going to put it in this district and try to boost up the influence I have here. And then I'm going to spend three gold and hire another gnome. I'll put that on the gnome lock of the tower. And I'm very tempted to buy a property at this point, but I think I'm going to hold on to my one coin. And that's going to end my action phase. Luke, it's your action phase now. Yeah. What do you want to do first? So first, my dwarf is coming back with a magic wand. And he's going to make this purple one go over here. Wow. So yes, that guild, remember, it allows you to swap property yeah. markers from two same properties. Okay, so I've got a little extra competition in my district, and you mm -hmm. have one less. That's very good for you. What do you want to do for your next action? So next, I'm going to build the keep. Oh, this costs three wood, three yeah. stone, two metal. That's going to clear out a I lot of your resources. That. But it's going to allow you to place two yeah. property markers. Where do you want to put them? Right here. Wow, you have a strong lead in that district for sure. Yep. Okay, well, you get to have that property card. Are you doing anything else? I don't think there's anything else you can do. Oh, you do have a coin. Do you want to buy a property? Nope. You're saving it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that did not go quite as well as I would have liked, honestly. I liked it. <laughs> of course you liked it. <laughs> now we move on to the non-players, Harvey and Walters. Now remember, we swapped. I'm now the first player, you're the second player. So now I'm taking the actions for non-player three, which is Harvey, and Luke will be taking the actions for non-player four, Mr. Walters. 
So let's get you back to the table. Let's see if I can try to recuperate some of this loss. All right, well, I'm going to have Harvey take the gatehouse because I'm afraid of Luke taking it. And I'm going to place the property marker right there. Flip over a new card, and now Luke... Oh, my goodness. Ooh. A gatehouse. Oh, dear. Okay, Luke, so what is Walter's going to do? He is going to do the gatehouse. <sighs> okay, and where are you going to place the property marker? Right here. Now, look what's happened here. Because he used the Wizard's Guild to swap this property marker, now there's two purple matching my two blue. So I don't have a majority here. This is going to bring down my total points. Thankfully, it's not the scoring phase yet. No. At the end of the action phase, we then move the non-players over one space here, like this. It's going to block up the Wizard's Guild and the Librarian's Guild. Yep. And I can't forget to replace the property card. It's a keep. That keep could not have appeared at a better time. Nope. Thank goodness. All right, but before I get ahead of myself, time to move on to the scoring phase. Yep. But we're not in a calendar space that has an X. So we skip that. We go on to the calendar. calendar. That's right, calendar phase. Now. Now we're going to be on to a round where at the end of this round, we are going to be doing some scoring. Yep. So this is going to be very, very important. But now it's placement. So let's get everyone back to the table and do that placement phase. Now, I really want to stay as the first player. So I'm going to place my dwarf into the king's camp as my first placement. Now, Luke, what do you want to do? I'm going to put a dwarf in the recruiter's guild. That's going to cost me one coin. Okay. Back to me. Yep. I'm going to send out another one of my dwarves into the mason's guild. That's going to cost me one coin as well, which I'll put into the supply. So I'm going to pass. All right. I'm going to put three elves in the wood. Okay. One elf here with a dwarf. Yes. And one dwarf to get money. Okay. So once again, the advantage of passing second, which I'm going to be doing now, is I can now place mine knowing what he's put here if I want to try to maximize my chance of getting bonuses. Yeah. But I have a very specific plan. I'm going to be placing my three elves into the woods as well and two of my dwarves on the gold mine, which is going to end the placement phase and now on to the collection phase. So I'm going to get free wood because I have free elves? That's right. Now, I also have three elves, but one of them is... A master. That's right. So I get two wood for him and then two for my other two regular yeah. elves. For a total of four, we both have the same number of workers. Yeah. So no so bonus. No well, the quarry is empty. We move right along to the mine, and Luke, you have got a pair of workers there. So yeah. you get to collect one metal one. plus... Plus the other. You get the bonus. Moving into the gold mine, I have two workers and Luke has one. one. So I get two gold for my workers plus... The extra. I get the bonus. And Luke, you get... One. That's right. And I took one too many. <laughs> so I'll return that and take my workers back. Now we move down to the king's camp. This was really important to me. I wanted to be able to still be the first player. So taking this back just means I can keep my first turn order crest. Oh. Now we move on to income and taxes. Okay, income time. I like yeah. this. I have two properties that earn me gold, so I get two gold. What about yeah. you, Luke? One. You get one. We're going to end right here. It's now the action phase. Yeah. I'm going first. Guys, we need to turn things around for me here. And this is important because we're going to be scoring at the end yeah. of this round. I want to remind you as a little hint, you can always build walls for three wood and three, three stone. stone. So keep that in mind when you're looking at what I might be able to do. At the end of this video, you're going to see the cards in my hand, the board, and everything else on here that you need to know in order to help me decide on my turn. Put yeah. your suggestion in the YouTube comments below. If you like someone's suggestion, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like it, don't give them a thumbs down. Just provide your own suggestion, then other people can vote for yours as well. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments as well. Well, is that it for now? Yep. Okay, until the next episode, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.